Great to see each and every one of you. Thank you for coming. We're going to worship the Lord together. Just in a few moments, we're going to start the service. So you just focus in to worshiping the King. Praise His name together. The Lord's been good. I hope you had a good week. Pray the Lord's blessing you. And let's ask Him to bless the day. Let's give Him the glory that He deserves the day because He's worthy of it all. John was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. He heard a voice behind Him and this is what it said. I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Behold, I live forevermore. Behold, I live. Behold, I live. Behold, I live forevermore. Behold, I live. Behold, I live. Behold, I live forevermore. Let's clap our hands. John was in the Spirit on the Lord's day.
sing hallelujah to our oh, God. Glory, hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Thank you, Jesus. We're here to worship the Lord Jesus today. Give Him the praise, the honor, and the glory. And just while we're getting the next song ready, happy birthday to wee Leah Gillett and Marling Lucas. So happy birthday to those two creators today. May the Lord bless them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You are beautiful beyond description. To marvelous for words, wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? You are so wise, Lord. Who can fathom? The depth of your love, Lord. You are beautiful beyond description. Majesty enthroned above. And I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand. I praise your name. Lord Jehovah. Just lift your voices in your car. Lift your voices online watching this service. Praise the Lord. Come on, you're beautiful. You are beautiful beyond description.
even on spoken a quest this morning, just lift yes. your hand. We're going to remember Lillian, Lillian Ross, who gone well yesterday, and she's at home recovering. Remember Lana Beverly as well. She goes this week to the doctors. Mark got home. Paul Evans who gone well yesterday as well. Again, Nessie, Aris Black as well. Mary, Mary Culbert, Sarah McCallion, Gary, Elaine, Pastor Phil's sister. Andy Houston, Kevin, Karen, Billy, and Martha. If you have an unspoken request, just lift your hand just now in the name of the Lord. Father, we come to you today. The mercy seat of God. In the name of Jesus, your Son, who came from heaven's glory into the sin cursed world to die on a cross for sinners like us. It's amazing grace, Lord. And it's also a wonderful demonstration of your love for us. Today, Lord, we're here to say thank you. We have gathered in our cars, Lord, in this car park, those watching online. We have gathered around your throne today to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And Lord, as we come around your table, to break bread together. Lord, will you just draw close to each and every single person in a car or at home watching. Lord, may we be conscious of your presence with us today. Lord, will you touch the people that we've mentioned on this list. Lord, from Lillian right down to the last individual and those who have lifted their hands, Lord, that unspoken request. And Lord, we do pray for our country today and our province and our nation we just commit it all to you but lord this is your day now lord let us worship you, praise you and remember you together in jesus lovely name amen thank you lord the same night in which the lord jesus was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he blessed the bread and then he took it and he gave it to his disciples and said Take it, this is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup was a new covenant shed for many of my blood for the remission of sins. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you to show the Lord's death till he comes. Thank God he's coming because this world's a mess. We're praising the Lord that there's hope beyond this life and there's a better world coming. He took bread, a symbol of his body given for you and me on the cross. That amazes me every time I lift this simple little thing. Jesus give us life for me and he give us life for you. Also took the cup to symbol of his blood shed on the cross for the cleansing of our sins isn't that wonderful he cleanses us from all our sins he's done it he does it every day he's a wonderful savior thank you for the blood lord thank you for the cleansing power yeah. cup Just in your car, brother and sister. There's nobody in your car. There's people in your car. Just, just forget about everybody and just thank the Lord. You are Lord. I love you. What was your love, Lord? What was your Jesus? Jesus, always your peace, Lord. <coughs> Dear Savior, Thou art mine. How sweet the thought to me. Let me
I love this verse. Thou art this sinner's So I thy friendship live. A sinner saved by grace. When thy sweet message came, my, my, mine, I know thou art mine. Savior, dear Savior. your hand in your car even at home just close your eyes and lift your hand to the Lord so let me sing thy praise so let me call thee mine I cannot doubt thy word I know chapter 20. Amen. And we'll begin to read from verse 1. Praise the Lord. Hope you're nice and comfortable in your car. Praise the Lord. Isn't it great to be saved? Born again of the Spirit, a child of God, no longer a slave of sin, serving the King. There's nothing like serving Jesus. And he's alive and well, and he's alive in this car park today and at home. John chapter 20. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved 
and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and they do not know where they have led him. Peter therefore went out, and the other disciple, and were going to the tomb. Verse 6, Then Simon Peter came, following him, John that is, and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen cloths lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they, had not, they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have led him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have led him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, Teacher. And brothers and sisters, just one last verse, verse 18. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Father, bless your word today to all of our hearts. And Lord, bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus, the greatest name on earth and in heaven. Amen. If I had a title for this message today, it's called A Converted Sinner's Love for Jesus. A converted sinner's love for Jesus. Verse 1 says, Now on the first day of the week, that's the Lord's Day today, as we know it's Sunday, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Do you know what I love about this verse? The person, the first person to arrive at the tomb on resurrection day was a converted sinner do you know second corinthians 5 and 17 says therefore if any man or woman be in christ they are a new creature all things are passed away and behold all things are become new and that's exactly what happened mary magdalene was a deep dyed sinner whom jesus had transformed or converted Mary had been an immoral woman, a prostitute, a demon-possessed slave of Satan. But the Lord Jesus saved her, rescued her, forgave, cleansed, delivered, and released her. Listen, according to Luke 8 and 2, from seven demons or seven evil spirits. This captive of Satan became a child of God. Jesus changed her from the inside out. People are trying to change with religion. No, Jesus changes people from the inside out. Jesus transformed Mary's messed up life and he set her free. He turned her mess into a miracle. I've said it for years. And Mary never forgot what the Lord had done for her. Brother and sister, do you remember what the Lord has done for you? PCN's theme tune from day one has been, Look what the Lord has done. Will you say praise the Lord? And that was Mary's testimony too. Yes, from day one, Mary loved the Lord Jesus and was determined to follow him for the rest of her life. When I ask you a question, do you love Jesus? No, I'm not asking you that question. I'm asking you, are you still in love 
with Jesus, do you still have that same love and desire that Mary had to follow Jesus for the rest of your life? Do you know, I've preached this for years. To know him is to love him. To love him is to serve him. And to serve him is to fulfill the purpose of God in your life. So love, Mary's love for Jesus brought Mary to the tomb on resurrection morning. I call that love's desire. She came early while it was still dark. Isn't that brilliant? She couldn't wait to get there. In fact, Matthew and Mark tell us Mary was the, the last to leave the tomb on crucifixion day. And she was the first to arrive at the tomb on resurrection day. That's what love does. When you're in love with someone, I'm just looking to see where she is. When you're in love with someone, you can't wait to see them. You'll spend hours in front of a mirror fixing one her. You'll put on the best perfume. Nothing's a chore. Nothing's a bother. You'll do whatever it takes to please the one you love. Time means nothing as long as it's with them. It all comes out of love's desire. But when Mary got there, to her total surprise, the stone was rolled away. The tomb was empty and Jesus wasn't there. She thought they'd come and stolen his body. And immediately she ran to tell Simon Peter and, and John. And I call that love's despair. Listen to her. They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb. And we do not know where they have led him. That's love's despair. I can't find the one I love. Mary's brilliant. She wasn't worried how the stone was rolled away. Or how the tomb was open. No, Mary's despair was, where is he? Where is Jesus? Where is her Lord? Peter and John Ran, into, ran to the tomb. They saw the grave clothes and the linen cloth laid separately. But not Jesus. He was nowhere to be found. They saw and believed and went away to their own homes. But in verse 11 we read, But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. I call that love's devotion. Peter and John went home. She's dead. Love keeps you there. They left. She remained. They couldn't stay. She couldn't leave. Love's devotion kept her at the tomb. Love's devotion caused her tears to flow and her heart to break. Love's devotion wouldn't let her go home without Jesus. Verse 11. As she wept. As she stooped down and looked into the tomb. Listen. She saw two angels in white sitting. One at the head. And one at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. Listen. Mary saw miracles. Listen to this. Mary witnessed the miraculous. She saw the stone was rolled away. But not him. She saw the empty tomb. But not him. She saw the two angels. But not him. The grave clothes. But not him. She saw the evidence of the resurrection. But not him. And they all meant nothing to Mary. Because she was looking for him. Love was looking for him. Brother and sister. Supernatural moments are brilliant. But they're meaningless without Jesus. They're meaningless without the Lord. Mary even saw the gardener, but didn't know it was Jesus. He asked, woman, why are you weeping? Jesus is speaking to her, yet she doesn't realize it's him. Do you know, sometimes love is blind. 
so also is distress. Remember the two on the road to Emmaus? They never recognized Jesus either because of sadness and disillusionment. Sir, she says, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've led him and I will take him away. Now, I don't know how Mary was going to do that, but I believe she meant it. And in verse 16, Jesus then speaks and says one word, Mary. Say it with me, Mary. Mary, she turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is meaning master, teacher, Lord. And I call that love's discernment. One word, one word, and Mary, Mary knew who it was. One word, and she knew it was him. One word, and she knew it was Jesus, her Lord. He called her name, and immediately she recognized his voice. What did he say? My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Her shepherd called, and the sheep followed her shepherd. I can remember pastoring the church, the People's Church in Falkirk for 21 years. Brother and sister, I used to get a phone call every week, every week in life. And when they answered it, all I heard was, George, George, just one word, George, one word. And I knew who it was. It was Mama. It was we, Martha McKim. One word. George. My mom used to call. She used to sing me in from the street. George. Your dinner. <laughs> Praise the Lord. George. One word. And I knew it was my mom. Do you know, to Mary, it was a divine revelation for her. A supernatural moment. Verse 18 says, She went then and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and what he had told her. I call that love's declaration. It's amazing. This converted sinner, listen to this now, this converted sinner was privileged to be the first to see Jesus alive. The first to hear him call her name and the first to tell others the news that Jesus was risen. The resurrection news. But to Mary, it was more than a declaration. It was a joy. And I call it love's delight. Mary couldn't contain her joy. She had to share it with others. Did you hear that, brother? If you're saved, when's the last time you've shared the good news about Jesus to others? When's the last time you shared your testimony with somebody for the first time? Mary ran. She couldn't contain her joy. She had to share it with others. She went immediately to tell the disciples the resurrection news. And she gave them, listen, her personal testimony. She declared, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he said. Jesus is alive. He is risen as he said. People's Church, Newton Abbey. The Lord Jesus allowed. I love this. The Lord Jesus allowed a transformed sinner. A converted former demon possessed prostitute. Whom he cast seven devils out of. He allowed her the privilege of declaring the good news of his glorious resurrection. Do you know what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1, 26 to 29, paraphrased? For you see your calling, brothers and sisters, that not many ways, mighty, noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things, the weak things, the base and the despised things of this world, to put the shame, the wise and the mighty, 
that no flesh should glory in his presence. And let him who glories glory in the Lord. As I close this morning, when I look around this car park driving, when I think of the people watching this online service, men and women who once were hell-bound sinners, who received his amazing grace, are now heaven-bound saints, lost sheep who heard and recognized the shepherd's voice and are today following Jesus their shepherd, prodigal sons and daughters who came to themselves in their sins and returned to their heavenly father. That's what I see when I look around this car park and those watching online who today are transformed converted by the power of the risen Lord and the gospel of Jesus Christ. I and some like myself are preaching the gospel they once hated. Others are living the gospel they once were ashamed of, declaring to a hopeless world that Jesus saves sinners and Jesus is alive. I and he's risen and I love him. Do you love him? Do you love Jesus? Are you in love with Jesus? Will you do anything for Jesus? Will you go anywhere for Jesus? Will you lay your life on the altar for Jesus? I love him, brother and sister. And the good news is, he's coming back again. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Isn't it great to know he's coming? And he's coming back for those who love him. This morning, the Lord Jesus is calling your name. He's calling your name. Can you hear him calling? Do you recognize that still small voice? John, Richard, Julie, Bill, Elizabeth. Do you realize it's him? You've heard him before. And you've ignored him. Now he's calling again. Will you answer his call? I remember brother and sister. Hearing him clearly. Calling my name. Nobody else heard it. Calling my name on several occasions. In my life. His voice was so real to me. Some of those moments were scary. And I knew the scripture as a boy. My spirit will not always strive with man. I knew if I ignored, ignored him again, it could be my last opportunity to respond to his call. But he was gracious with me and waited until I eventually surrendered to his lordship. I recall the night I made him Rabboni, my master and lord of my life. I repeat as I close, to know him is to love him. To love him is to serve him. To serve him is to fulfill the plan of God for your life. If you're watching this service online, if you're watching this service in a car and you're not right with God, unsee a friend, our prodigal son or daughter, or lukewarm, Sour, out of sorts believer. Let me finish with a question. Can you hear his voice? Can you hear him calling? Can you hear him calling your name? And will you respond to him today? May the Lord Jesus 
be close to you as you respond to him in the name of Jesus. Amen. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee all the pleasures of sin I resign. My grace. surrender your life to him. Let him recognize his voice today as we pray. If you want to pray this prayer, pray it loudly that people can hear you. Don't be ashamed of the one who died and rose again for you. And he's calling your name now. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, your lovely son, who died and rose again for a sinner like me. Lord, forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today and let me fall in love with you for the rest of my life. Lord, save me. 
Restore me. Revive me. Touch me. May your voice be real to me today. And let me answer your call. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, will you bless your people today as we separate? Bless the next service and then online tonight with a gospel message for Pastor John. Lord, remember the rest of the week coming. But Lord, let this day be a special day that we can love you, worship you, and celebrate your goodness. In Jesus' lovely name, amen. May the Lord bless you, brothers and sisters. Safe journey home.